Coming back to Frankston, where we are this afternoon, this, as I mentioned, is one of the most marginal seats in the state. It's one of a string of four what they call sand belt seats, marginal seats, four of them in a row here, this part of Melbourne, uh, on margins, all four of them, of less than 2.1%. But Frankston is the most marginal, really a must win for the Liberals, and the Liberal candidate, Michael Lamb, joins me now. Thanks very much for your time this afternoon. Welcome to Frankston Day. Thank you very much. It's great to be back here. Do you think you're going to win on Saturday? Absolutely. I've done an enormous amount of work and uh, been out there talking to locals and uh, I'm confident that they know that under this government, cost of living, crime and congestion has got out of control and the only way to get it back in control is to put Matthew Guy in as Premier of Victoria. Well, let's pick through those issues you mentioned. Cost of living. Yep. What would you do? What would li the Liberals yeah. do? Well, we've got a suite of policies. Uh, you know, when you take out nearly 23% of the state's uh, baseload power, is it any wonder? Is it any wonder our power prices are going through the roof? So we will go to tender, we will go to the market, and we will have a power station built to put more supply back into the market. Gas, a coal-fired power station. No, it'll be up, well. It'll be up to the market to determine what they're best, but it will be reliable and affordable. I'm not. I'm personally not against renewable energy at all, but it's got to be reliable. It's got to be affordable. In relation to gas, this government stopped exploration of gas in this state stopped exploration of gas in this state. We are importing gas into this state. Absolutely ridiculous. We will go into uh, to drill for gas, conventional drilling for gas, and we will put gas we will put gas into the market. What about fracking? No, not fracking. No, no, no. Conventional conventional exploration for gas into the market, more supply into the market. We are importing gas. We should be self sufficient in gas. And why not why not fracking? Plenty of people say there's heaps of, oh, well, heaps the, of coal seam gas. Well, yeah, and there's also heaps of environmental issues. So the, right. the conventional way of drilling for gas. OK, so there'd be conventional gas opened up, there'd be a new power station yep. paid for by the, by the state? Private sector, yep. Oh, by the private sector. Yep, yep. So we'll, tender, we'll tender to the to the send whatever the market decides. We'll, well they, they can do that already, though, can't they? Who's they? that? The private sector can build a power station if they want. Well, we're going to, well they haven't been allowed to under this government. Haven't been allowed to build, build a, a build a fire, uh, build a power station. Well, there's all sorts of renewables and yeah. wind power. What are you saying? You... Whatever, whatever is the most reliable and affordable, the market will determine that. But I, that's what I'm saying. The market determines that every day, don't they? Yeah, what, what are you saying? You do differently. Well, the tender process will be building a power station. The, the tender process for what? For the government. The lowest for... base power. Yeah. So the government, the taxpayer would fund. This no, no, power it's station. private industry. But they can do that already. Well, they haven't. They haven't. So what would the government do? We'll allow them to do it. But with their own money? Yes. But they're allowed to do that now? Well, they're not, though, are they? Why not? I don't know. So, hang on, I'm just confused. What, what changes? What changes is we will tender to, the, to the, get the lowest base power we can get, and we'll get a power station built. So, sorry, tender to purchase the power itself? No, or? to build the power station. But you're not building it? No, the private, private sector will. OK, so... But the private sector can go and build a power station today. Well, they haven't, though, have they? They haven't been allowed to under this government. Oh, I'm a little confused. Well, they've closed power stations in this government. Yeah, they closed, government. well, Hazelwood closed. They tripled the brown coal tax. Yeah, anyone, well, Hazelwood anyone, closed anyone, 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 anyone. So what Hazelwood. would you change? I'm just trying to establish what the Liberals would change to, to, to see a new coal-fired power station open. No, I'm not saying it's going or to be... Or a new power station. Oh, you're putting words in my mouth. No, no, I'm no. just trying to... Oh, whatever, the, whatever okay. the, it may be... You explain to me it what, may will be, what would It change? may well be, it may well be um, renewable energy. Okay. Whatever the market determines. But they do that already. So renewables are built already. Yeah. Are they? Well, they're not reliable and they're not affordable. So you're talking about coal or gas. Yeah. So what would you do? Get the market to determine what the, pro what the best, best way forward is. But they... They don't do, I'm just a little, uh, still a little oh, So we're going around in circles. Oh, no, that's why so I'm just trying just, to establish. All, I'm sa all my understanding of it is, is that we will mm. tender to get private industry to build a power station. OK, with a bit of help from the state, presumably. To yes. Get, so a bit of taxpayers' money. Yes. Right. Because you earlier said it wouldn't be. Sorry. OK. Do you know how much? No. OK. Let's move on. Cost of living was one. Yep. Uh, crime and law and order was another yep. you mentioned there. Yep. What would you do to fix the legitimate concerns people have about law yeah. and order? So it's mandatory sentencing for repeat violent offenders, minimum mandatory sentencing. We'll also put police back into schools to build positive relationships with young people. Fantastic program. Also puts a police officer in the classroom talking to young people, drugs, road safety, doing the right thing. 
We'll build a detox facility to help detox these young offenders off the crystal meth because the ice is what's driving everything. You are a police officer, yes. a serving police officer yep. on leave. Uh, would mandatory minimum sentences make a difference in your experience? Yes, I do. I think so. Because at the moment, there is no deterrent. The deterrent factor, in my view, is out of balance. So what's the big problem here in Frankston in particular when it comes to law and order? Crystal right? meth. Crystal meth. The ice. And so the crime that they are um, committing is, yep. is what is it, break and end of physical assault? Yeah, sort of serious and violent crime, uh, volume crime. Right. It's, it's, and it's also, it's not just about that, it's also, you know, ice addicted people in the community, everywhere I've gone door knocking, people have said, that house over there, full of ice addicts, I don't feel safe, they're erratic. Right, they're, and what are police doing about that? Well, we're, we, <laughs> we're doing all that we can. It's, it's a difficult, difficult program. Uh, Difficult so when process. people say to you, as a police officer, there's a house there full of ice addicts, yep. what, what happens at the moment? When I'm door knocking? No, no, no. When, what do police do when there's a... Well, it's, it's, it's all, there's well, a it's all about sufficient police on the front line. It's also all about... Uh, we could do a warrant every day. Mm. We could do a warrant every day. It's just not physically possible. There's that much ice around. Right. So how would you reduce the amount of ice in Victoria and, and here in particular? reduce it. Mm. Well, it's, it's about putting police resources on the front line and uh, it's about putting uh, the appropriate resources in so that we can continue to fight the war on drugs. There's um, the crystal meth, um, there's nowhere to go for these kids to get off it. So we'll, we'll build a facility where they can be taken and detoxed uh, through the court. At the moment, mm. uh, detox facilities are publicly funded, are very, 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 very scarce. You know, I spoke to a lady the other day, 90, uh, 90 days was 24 grand in a private in a private facility. Yeah, right. She paid that for her grandson. So are you confident in saying the plans the Liberals have got would lower the crime rate? Yes, I believe so. Yes, I am. Yeah, absolutely. All right. And the incidents, the sad incidents we've seen, the tragic incidents over the last couple of weeks, Burke Street attack, yep. the arrests that took place early yesterday yep. morning as well, yep. have they affected your campaign at all? Are people more worried about... It yeah, certainly gets it, raised. It, it certainly does, gets yeah. raised. Yeah. And what do people say? They don't. They're not comfortable. They don't feel safe. They don't like the fact that someone can do that. They like. Mm. They don't like the fact that it's occurring in such, you know, such regularity. Mm. And do they blame the the Andrews government? Um, yeah, they do. They they say, uh, you know, why wasn't he locked up? He was on bail. They say, uh, why didn't uh, the police know? They say, uh, you know, why wasn't he deported? Mm. All those sort of things. And. What's your understanding of this? Because there's been a bit of debate, as you know, this week about whether federal agencies, ASIO and so on, yeah. are telling the Victorian police enough. I mean, we now know that, yes, they did tell them that this guy had his um, shy rally, had his passport cancelled, that he was clearly on a watch list. Yeah. Are the local police given enough information about these people? Clearly not. Clearly not. So that, is that something that you would well, it's something, want to change? It's something, you know higher than my pay grade, but clearly uh, we need better ex exchange of information between our federal colleagues and, uh, and our state colleagues, yes. Yeah, all right. Uh, anyway, coming back to how things are going to go on Saturday, you're confident of winning here? Look, it's 168 votes, basically, yeah, to change. Man. It's the most marginal Labor held seat in the state. I heard you talking before about yeah. marginal seats. It's, it, it I think Paran, Paran's a little yeah. bit lower, but that's the Greens and us. Yeah. This is the most marginal Labor held seat. Um, I've talked to lots of people. I've door knocked lots of people, rung lots of people up. Uh, I understand what their concerns are. That's coming back to me in pre-poll. Yes, we understand. Yes, we want to change. Yes, we want to feel safer. We want law and order under control. We want cost of living under control. And we want congestion under control. All right. Well, we'll be interested to see how you go. Michael Lamb, thanks very much for Thank joining you, David.